Hello everyone, welcome to this amazing workshop today. Uh, my name is Valentina and I'm from the marketing team here in Iron Hack. I'm super, super excited because we are 682. This is so crazy guys, you guys, are, you guys are amazing. And we really want to have like even more, so join us this afternoon. Uh, well, I'm very excited to share today this page with the amazing uh, Juliana Ravi. Hi Juliana, how are you? Hi, happy to be here. Hi, Valentina. Hi, everybody. Hi to the 683 people in the room. Wow, impressive. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> this is so crazy. And everyone in the chat, like, this is fascinating when everyone starts sharing what they're based on. Like, we have people from Lisbon, Frankfurt, Barcelona, Amsterdam, Brazil. Juliana is everywhere. In Argentina, right? Right now? Yes. I'm in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, Juliana, it's such a digital nomad. I mean, I think we have we have collaborated like three times, and every time we collaborate in different like uh, you know like sessions, you are in a different place in the world. I remember, yes, like in a Mexico. different country. That's yeah, cool. like Mexico, Mexico, Lisbon, then Lisbon, and now in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And now in Buenos yes. Aires. Yeah. Well, this is amazing. Well, I can see that Melba is in the Canary Islands, and I'm also in the Canary Islands. So, hello there. I'm in Fuerteventura, in the Netherlands, Hamburg. Well, this is so cool, guys. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Uh, we re we normally have a lot of like international audience, and we really love to you know like to read all of this from Paris with love. Well, thank you <laughs> and welcome everyone. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, I would like to start saying that this webinar, it's been recorded right now. So no worries guys, if you guys like miss any second, no worries. Tomorrow morning, we will send you the recording. And also Juliana not only prepared an amazing workshop for you today, but she also prepared a very cool template that will help you a lot with LinkedIn, okay? So we will send you also this template tomorrow in the email. And yeah, so now I would like to explain you a, a little bit of the Crowdcast rules. Crowdcast is the platform where we are right now, basically. So uh, of course I can see that you guys already found the chat and it's on fire, I have to say it right now. And I love that. I really, we really, really want to keep this chat like that, like very like active. Uh, so feel free to share anything guys, especially uh, if you guys, for example, like don't hear as well or don't see as well, this is super like important. So let us know everything, you know. And yeah, we also have an ask a question session, and this part is like super important because I know you guys, you know, like have a lot of questions. And Juliana will do like uh, at ten minutes of Q and A at the end. So make sure to post your question in the ask a question session, and please, please, please don't put it in the chat because. As you guys can see, the chat is on fire and the question will get like lost, literally. So please make sure to put there. And if someone else uh, asked already your, your same question, uh, you guys can vote for the question, you know, and then we can prioritize that question. Uh, we also have uh, this green button here below the screen. If you guys want to have more information, uh, more information about our boot camps on how to kickstart your career in tech, please feel free to click in here and have more information about our bootcamps. But anyway, uh, right now, uh, I would like to do like a very small intro about Ironhack. So I will share my screen one second and I swear it will take this few minutes because I know you guys came to see Juliana. <laughs> so this will take just a few minutes. Uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen. I think you guys do. Um, okay, so, uh, well, who are we? Basically, in I Don't Hack, we are a tech school, okay? We are disruptive. We, we, what we want is what, uh, we want to teach our students the in-demand tech skills of the future, but today, okay? Uh, how we are doing this? Well, we are doing this through boot camps. Uh, what are boot camps, Valentina? Basically, very intensive and immersive. Uh, education basically our let's say methodology it's all about learning by doing so this is why it's so 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 intense these are basically three months where basically the our students give give us like their life literally 
Um, we also have a methodology that it's outcome focus. Uh, we really want you to make we want to make sure that you guys are job ready uh, to build, you know, like innovative uh, products or you know, like launch your new career in tech. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so as I said, we are basically preparing the next generation of digital creators. Uh, and uh, we have diff uh, four different uh, boot camps uh, or, well, courses basically that it's web development, UX, UI design, data analytics, and cyber security. As I said, you guys have this green button here where you guys can have like all the information and syllabus and so on about each of it. Uh, well, uh, I don't have basically is worthwhile. I think this is one of the main reasons why we are from all over the world right now. As you guys can see, we have people like in the chat from all over the world. Well, I don't have is it have nine different campuses plus remote. Uh, we have um, over 9,000 alumni right now. And something that we're very, very proud of is that we have 85% of placement rate in the first six months. And this is due to the fact that we have like over 600 high impact nerds network that make it like even more easy uh, to, to actually, uh, well, place like our students into like very cool companies after the bootcamp. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have a very uh, global supported community uh, around the globe. And yeah, I mean, I think that's it. And now I would like to say, let's get started, Juliana. Uh, so yeah, I will stop sharing my screen. And yeah, guys, I mean, uh, I will let you with the amazing Juliana to start this cool and workshop yeah, about LinkedIn. And I will be all the time, uh, like in the back end, uh, reading all your comments. So let us know everything. And I hope you found this very, very useful and cool. So I will let you hear, guys. See you in a while. Yes, thank you. Thank you. OK, hello, everybody. I'm very impressed with the number of people who are here today. So I cannot see you, but I can feel the energy. So thanks. Thanks for being here. Let me share my screen and then let me share that. I have a presentation that I prepared for you. OK. It's coming. Yes, I hope you are all seeing that. I'm going to put like this. OK, so I hope it's all OK. I don't see you anymore now. I just see my presentation. So I'm going to be checking the chat later on to see uh, your comments, your questions. So feel free to do the presentation. Take notes, of course, and also write on the chat if you have any questions. OK, so today we are here today to talk about LinkedIn and how LinkedIn can be used as a tool to land your dream job. This is our topic for today, a hot topic, a very uh, necessary one nowadays. So let's go into it. I want to quickly introduce myself. So my name is Juliana Rabi. I'm currently a career coach. So what I do is I help my clients to land jobs faster. So I'm on the candidate side and I use all my knowledge, all my background to help people to land their dream job. I worked previously for more than 15 years as a recruiter, so I know exactly what companies are looking for when they are, you know, interviewing a candidate, checking the LinkedIn profile, screening a resume, and I also um, searched for jobs. So I know exactly how you should be on the side that you are at the moment, searching for jobs and all of that. So I have been in all the sides, and I'm going to bring all of that, all my experience to you today in this seminar. Let's start from the beginning, right? Understanding uh, why LinkedIn. So this seminar is LinkedIn as a tool to land a dream job. So why are we talking about LinkedIn? Why we chose this tool? There are other tools out there, right? That could eventually help you to land a remote job. But today we chose to speak about LinkedIn. So let's understand why LinkedIn as a connection to help you to land your dream job. So first I wanna share some numbers some statistics about LinkedIn to um, show you, to demonstrate you how important this platform is, okay? So first, let's say that LinkedIn has more than 660 million members all over the world. So numbers are impressive. There are a lot of people that are today on LinkedIn. So that's the first thing. People are there. The platform is used on a daily basis. Also, uh, big companies, important companies in the market out there, like the Fortune 500 companies, they are also 
on LinkedIn. So it's not only for small companies, not only for startups, it's also for them, but big companies, well-known companies in the market, they also use LinkedIn. And when it comes to photo on the profile uh, of your LinkedIn profile, having a photo increase in 24 times the chances that people uh, actually see your profile, that they think that you are a real person, they want to connect with you, and 36 times more when you send message. So you must have a profile photo on your LinkedIn profile. For resume, it's a bit different depending on the country, right? On the resume or on the CV, you don't need to have, or you shouldn't have actually a photo on your, uh, on your resume, but on LinkedIn, you must have a photo because it increases a lot your visibility there. Also, LinkedIn is very used nowadays by young people. So I don't know how old you are, but uh, people between 18 and 24 years, they are also present on LinkedIn. So it's not something only for old people. Okay, let's, let's understand that. People with money are also on LinkedIn. So the average salary on LinkedIn is around uh, $46,000 per year. Of course, there are people who make more money and less money, but I want you to understand that people who make money are on LinkedIn, companies who can pay a higher salary to you, they are also on LinkedIn. So there is a lot of money going around LinkedIn. And um, 9 million of users on LinkedIn, they are in a senior level. They are you know, top level positions in the companies they work for. And 63 million, they are in decision-making positions, which means that they are the ones who say, I want to hire you for this position. This is a good candidate. Let's hire this guy. Let's pay more salary so this guy can come work for us. So again, Young people, old people, decision makers, uh, people with money to hire you, they are all on LinkedIn. So you don't want to be out of that, right? If you are searching for a job, right, and the, the future company that will hire you, the future, recruit, the future hiring manager or the recruiter who is taking care of the recruitment process, if they search for your name on LinkedIn and they cannot find you, you know what's going to happen? You're going to look suspicious. It looks very awkward, very weird when a candidate is not present on LinkedIn. Because as I just showed with the numbers, everybody's on LinkedIn. So are you there? If you're not, let me tell you, you're going to look very suspicious. But there is another side of the story also. Maybe you are on LinkedIn. You're part of those 660 million of people who are already on LinkedIn. But your profile is not updated. You're not showing the right version online. You're not you know, communicating the right message. You're not selling yourself in the best way as possible. So the result is that you're going to look terrible in the eyes of the recruiter or the hiding manager. So you're going to send a completely wrong message to them. So you don't want to look suspicious by not being on LinkedIn, but also you don't want to look terrible by being there with the wrong image on your profile, right? So all of that should bring you to this question, like why why LinkedIn? Why is it important? Why should you use or at least consider using LinkedIn during your job search? So you don't need to stop using Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the other social media. There is no need to compete here. You don't need to say, oh, I love LinkedIn. It's my favorite one ever. No, no, you don't need to choose LinkedIn as a favorite one. You just need to understand that it can be one more touch point, one more way that future companies we will know about you. And why is that? Because Google likes LinkedIn. So I don't know if you have done that, but if you go on Google and search for your name, just type your name and see what appears on the first page on Google. Don't go right now to do it, but write down a note for you to do it later. So most likely, if you type your name on Google and you click, uh, uh, click search, LinkedIn will, your LinkedIn profile, right? If you have one, of course, will appear in the first page of Google. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not updated, even if you don't remember what you wrote there, probably Google will position very high your LinkedIn profile because Google and LinkedIn, they, are, uh, they get along well. So visibility will come out of that, right? Also, if you're not yet on LinkedIn, but you start being more active and using the platform in the right way, you can reach a different audience, people that maybe are not in your network yet people that you cannot connect via Instagram or via Facebook or other social media. So you get access to different people. And remember, decision makers are on LinkedIn, people, uh, important companies are on LinkedIn. So you get access to those people and it's for free, right? You don't need to pay to use LinkedIn. Also, if you don't know that, uh, please 
make a note. And if you know, it's just a reminder, it's just a confirmation for you that recruiters, they do use LinkedIn every single day on a job search when they are searching for a candidate, not job search, a candidate search, sorry. So LinkedIn, uh, recruiters do use LinkedIn as a tool to find candidates. So again, if you're not there, you won't be found by recruiters. So that's why you should consider using LinkedIn in your job search. There are so many reasons. I just summarized those three ones, but believe me, um, if you wanna land your dream job, LinkedIn should be one of the tools maybe the main one that you want to use in this process. And then you might be thinking, mm -hmm, who is this lady, right, to be here giving this seminar, talking about LinkedIn, the importance of LinkedIn and all of that. So let me share a bit more about me and my journey with LinkedIn, right? I have been using LinkedIn for many years in my career. I don't want to sound too old, but yes, for many years already. And the way I use LinkedIn changed according to the moment I was in my life. So at some point, I was a job seeker, just like you. I was also looking for a job, trying to land my, uh, my dream job. And when I was a job seeker, I was using LinkedIn to search for jobs, like to find the right offers, and also to connect with companies and with people working in that company. So as a job seeker, as a candidate, I used LinkedIn uh, many times, many years in many different states of my life. I also used LinkedIn as a recruiter because um, as I mentioned in the initial introduction, introduction, I worked as a recruiter for more than 15 years. So during those years, I was working LinkedIn as one of the main tools, if not the main tool, to find candidates. So every day I was, connect to my LinkedIn and searching for candidates, exchanging messages, sending invitations for interview and all of that. So as a recruiter, LinkedIn was a tool I was using very often. And nowadays I work as a career coach. I help candidates to land their dream job faster. And I teach my clients, just like I'm doing with you today, I teach them how to use LinkedIn to achieve their career goals, to get promoted, to get a better salary, to land a job in one specific company. So today I teach people how to use LinkedIn. So currently I use LinkedIn as a way to increase my network. So I connect with so many amazing people in the platform. It's, it's a great place to network, uh, especially if we cannot go to in-person events as we used to. So LinkedIn is a great way to network. I also learn a lot with LinkedIn. Yeah, I read articles, I keep updated about things related to my career. So it's a great source of learning. It's not a formal course, but I do learn every single day on LinkedIn with the things I, I read and share there. Also, it works as a, a lead generator for me. So I get new clients as a career coach through LinkedIn. So visibility and business money comes to me through LinkedIn also. And as I said, I provide training and consultants about LinkedIn. So what I want to show here is that you might be searching for different uh, goals, different things with LinkedIn, but LinkedIn was present in my career for many years. The way I was using the platform changed a bit depending on the moment I was, but I have been using LinkedIn and I have been um, benefiting from using LinkedIn for many years already. Some of the results I got for you to see that this is real. It's not like a theoretical thing. So in my case, I got job offers. So companies, recruiters were sending me direct messages and say, hey, can you check this job offer? I think you have a perfect profile. I want to interview you for that without me applying for jobs. That's the thing. I was also applying for jobs, but passively headhunters and recruiters, they were coming to me, finding my profile and approach me. That's amazing, right? Imagine that we are here watching this seminar and then you finish and you have a message on LinkedIn from a recruiter saying, hey, I found your profile. I want to interview. That's what was happening to me like several times. It can happen with you too. I found great job offers. I increased my visibility to the right audience or to the companies I wanted to work for when I was uh, job search. I met people on LinkedIn, like on direct message, but also in the real life. I met people like face to face that I started um, knowing them through LinkedIn. Um, several business connections, partnerships, as I said, learning about my area, invitation for events like this, for podcasts, for other presentations. And right now I have my own company, my own business. So 70% of my clients, they come from LinkedIn. So results are impressive. Those are my results, but I just want to show you that this is real. This is happening. Okay. So in case you decide like, 
okay, that seems okay. Numbers are quite impressive. I want to give it a try. I want to see how to, you know, use LinkedIn to land my dream job. I will give it a try. Welcome. Great decision. So now you need to think, consider two aspects, okay? If you decide to use LinkedIn more often in the right way, improve the way you use LinkedIn. First thing, I invite you to think about why. Why are you going to use LinkedIn? Which is your reason? Which is your motivation, your purpose to use LinkedIn? Because if you don't have clarity about it, you're going to get lost in the process. I, I have seen this happen. So if you want to use LinkedIn more often right now to land a dream job, understand why you are using the platform. And the second invitation I have uh, for you is what are you going to use LinkedIn for? What is your purpose? What is the reason? Which are the results you want to get out of LinkedIn? So get clarity about it, your why, and what you're going to use it for. Write it down, I suggest, so you don't forget, and then you will align every single action you have in the platform with your why and the, what you're going to go, uh, going to use LinkedIn for. Okay, get clarity about that, and then you will be ready to take the first step, right? What you do first. And my suggestion is that you start by getting an always star profile. Okay, let me explain you what is an always star profile so you understand what I'm going to say after that. Always star profile is a LinkedIn term. Okay, it's a term that LinkedIn created to classify the profiles that are complete. So if you fill up some areas, on your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn will consider your profile all star. So it's just like LinkedIn language, a LinkedIn term, but you want to get that. And I'm going to explain you why you want to get a LinkedIn all star profile as the first step when you decide using LinkedIn. First reason is because the algorithm um, will pay you back. The algorithm will give you way more visibility if you have an all-star profile, if you have a complete profile, then if you do not have that. So when, um, when recruiters are searching for your profile, I mean, recruiters will not search for Joanne. I want to search Joanne. They don't know yet your name and your surname, of course. That's not how recruiters search. They will search for skills. So for example, if a recruiter is searching for French language, English language, uh, U.S. design experience, project management experience, for example, those four um, skills, and they click search, the platform will show a list of people, right, that meet those requirements. That's how recruiters, they search on LinkedIn. They don't search for your name, they search for skills. They search for language, for experience, for technology, and all of that. And then LinkedIn will rank, right, will put an order on the, the names that they show on the, uh, on the platform. It's just like when you go on Google and you search, for example, pizza, for your dinner tonight after this presentation. If you want to eat pizza, you can search on Google like pizza nearby and then Google is going to show you, I don't know, 10 pages with 10 different pizza places close to you. I doubt that you go to the second page of Google to find your pizza, right? You most likely will find your pizza on the first page. The same thing happens on LinkedIn. So when recruiters are searching for candidates, you want to be in the first page or in the first pages. Why? Because this is going to give you more visibility. And if you have an always star profile, you will be um, showed, your profile will appear first to the recruiter. So the second topic that I mentioned here, LinkedIn will show uh, you higher in the search if you have an all-star profile. And also, if you have a complete profile, it means that you're filling up, you're writing more uh, stuff about you, more information about you on LinkedIn. So you have the, the chance to sell yourself better because you're sharing more information about you. So these are the, the three main reasons why you want to have an all-star profile and how to get there, right? One first part is why you should have that. Now, let me tell you which are the specific areas. You must fill it up in your LinkedIn profile to have an all-star profile. You might want to write down this. So write those areas just to go back to your LinkedIn profile after the presentation and check if you have all those areas fill it up. So the first thing you must fill it up in your profile to have an all-star profile profile is a headline. Headline is that line right under your name. Okay, you have the profile photo, you have your name, and under you have a line, that's the headline. So you need to fill it up something there to have an all-star profile. Second thing is your location. So you must select a city and a country. Even if you work remotely, even if you travel, you must select a location in a country. 
profile photo is the round one, okay? That uh, there is one that appears on the back, but I'm talking about the round one with your face. About, this is a part that not all the profiles have. So if you don't have an about a summary, you need to add that in your profile. Otherwise, it's never going to be all we start. You must have a current work experience. Yeah, even if you're not working at the moment, even if you're only studying, you have to have, uh, you need to have a current uh, work experience and also at least one education, one course that you have done. Those are the areas you must fill it up to have an all star profile on LinkedIn. Okay. I want to share some tips to make your profile look amazing to make you as a candidate stand out from others and be more attractive for companies to hire you. So let's see some tips that I will share with you today. And I want to start with the profile photo. It's extremely important. As I shared at the beginning, some data, right? Profiles with photos, they have 26 uh, times more visibility than profiles without photos. So please promise me that if you don't have a profile photo on LinkedIn, you're going to fix that today. Because profiles photo, uh, profile without photo on LinkedIn don't work out at all. So make sure you have one. And if you have, review if your photo uh, is a decent one. Maybe you change your haircut, the color. Uh, it's longer now. It was short, whatever. Just make sure you have a, a recent profile photo. Also, uh, you can do some little bit of production. Make sure the lightning is good. Maybe some makeup or a color that uh, stand out that make you look good. So produce yourself. Not a photo that you take, you know, on the couch, relax. So it's a professional photo. A professional platform so be careful and and you know choose one that makes you look good in your professional photo you want to avoid what i call zoom meeting surprises so you um someone see you on, on your linkedin right see your profile photo and then this person go on a zoom call with you and suddenly the person is like wow like maybe she won't say but she's like you look completely different and <laughs> you're looking on the profile photo on linkedin so we don't want that so make sure it's a nice photo good quality you look like you you know you are right now and also you don't need to be extremely formal in the photo if you don't dress extremely formal normally if your job your uh, your area your sector doesn't require that no need to put like a suit or a very formal clothes. just dress as you normally dress but make sure you have a good profile photo because this is also selling you as a good candidate for the company Another photo that we have in the profile is the background photo. It's like a, a rectangular thing that appears behind your profile photo, behind the, right, the round one. And if you don't have one, it's going to feel like a gray thing on your LinkedIn profile. So by default, when you create your LinkedIn profile, it appears on gray. You have the option to add a background photo. And this is the invitation I make to you because you replace the boring gray as i like to call uh, by something way more interesting so go for it not everybody does it but again we're talking about ways to make you look good you look amazing so having a nice background photo is a way to make you look amazing also try as much as possible to associate that image that photo with what you do with your area with your services so don't put just like a nice beach for example photo that you took on your holidays that's an amazing photo for sure but it's not related to your um, professional path to what you do professionally so be careful about the photo be intentional about it and select something that gives tips to people about what you do professionally you can also add text this is the example i have in my uh, background photo at the, at the moment so you can write something you don't have to but you can play a bit with words also not only image and come on, be creative, be innovative. Remember, we are talking about ways to sell yourself as the best candidate for the company. So this is a nice way to use your creativity to make you look good to whoever finds you on LinkedIn, okay? Also, let's talk about the headline. As I mentioned before, the headline is that line that appears right under your name on your LinkedIn profile. So it's, it's a part that has a lot of visibility um, and we want to take care of that so headline is that line right under your name there are different ways that you can write a nice headline i'm going to show two different structures but there are way more uh, structures that you can use but i just want to be very specific with two 
So you can start with those ones if you're a bit lost about what to write in your headline, okay? So an easy structure, but very effective also, is that you use different keywords related to your area, keywords related to your profession, to your career, to the kind of job you want to do, and you separate them by, by those horizontal bars like this. So I shared some examples here. Um, career advice author, then you have the horizontal bar, founder at, and then you put your website, for example, and then former recruiter. This is one option. Another option, just for you to understand, of course, you're going to adjust to your profession, to your career, but just for you to visualize what I'm talking about. You use keywords or short expressions, and then you separate them with this horizontal bar. Okay, this is very good to help you to appear on the recruiter search. So think also like if a recruiter is searching for uh, a professional that's going to do what I do, which kind of words, which kind of expressions the recruiter is going to search for. So you don't need to come up out of your mind with these uh, keywords. Just think like what are recruiters looking for when they search for my profile. So if I have the skills, if I have that thing, I'm going to highlight that in my headline. So you just put them separate with horizontal bars. That's an easy structure, very effective. I want to present you a second option in case you want to go some steps ahead, you want to complicate a little bit. You can um, put your job title, for example. Uh, in this case, I share the social media manager. Then you use the horizontal bar also. And then you say what you do and for whom. So helping software startup managers and grow their social media to drive more sales. So you are not only using the keywords, you are still with the social media manager, but you tell what you do for whom. You can even say how you do that. So I know it's a bit more elaborated, right? It's difficult to you know, find the right words. You have only 220 characters, but you can play a little bit with that because it also makes you stand out as a candidate. So follow any of those two structures, just separate the keywords with the horizontal bars or put your job title and then elaborate a bit more what you do for whom and how. Both ways are great. And uh, just remember to review your headline from time to time and don't be afraid to give it a try. Test something. If you're not sure it's good, you can change a little bit, but the headline is extremely important um, on the recruiter's search, okay? Then we go back to uh, the about part of your profile. I mentioned before that uh, it doesn't appear by default when you create a LinkedIn profile. So maybe you not even have that. So don't, don't feel like, oh my goodness, I'm doing something wrong. No, if you don't have it, you just need to go to a button that says add new session and then you select about, okay? But I recommend that you do that. You should have an about in your profile because First of all, it's going to make you have an all-star profile, but also it's a great area to sell yourself as uh, the perfect candidate for the company. So I have some tips for you to write a great about. So understand that it's a very large area. You have up to 2,000 characters. That's very long. You can write a lot with 2,000 characters. So no need to write like two, three phrases and be very short. No, 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 no. Go creative here, 2,000 characters. Um, the first three lines that you write are the most important ones. Why? Because they will appear and then there will be a button on the right side saying see more and then people need to click on see more to see to unfold the rest of your about. So if the three lines are not attractive, people probably won't click in the see more button. So make sure you hook, you use something attractive, interesting in the first three lines of your about so people are curious and they will click in the see more to keep reading the rest of your profile. I suggest that you write in first person instead of saying Juliana is blah, 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 Juliana, just say I am because it's like, you are introducing yourself to someone who is reading your profile. So better to use the first person. I am, I did. Remember to present achievements. Achievements are results. Positive impact that you did in your previous jobs, in the previous projects that you participate. Forget about just the descriptive, the tasks. I was doing this, this, and that. Who cares about it? I care about the impact that you did, the results, how you made a positive impact on that company, how much money you saved, uh, time you saved, process that you improved, 
client retentions, the budget you mentioned, so mention numbers and percentage, this is gonna make you look amazing. And most of people don't do that. So if you do, you're already standing out from others. Um, as it can be a very long text, right? Up to 2000 characters, make it easy for people to read. So you can give a space between paragraphs, between phrases. So there is like a, a white line, a blank space between lines. It's gonna be way easier for people to understand. You can play a bit with capital letters, right? Some in capital letters, some text in small letters. You can use some emojis. So just take care of also of the visual part of this text, because as I said, it can be very long. So make it is, um, user friendly for whoever is reading your profile. Remember to make it about your future company. So it's not, I mean, I know it's your profile, but you're talking to your future employee, to the company that will hire you. So make it clear, like why they should hire you. Why are you a good candidate? So remember always who is going to read your profile and make it about them, not only about yourself. The, the more clear you are, the better. So what do you do for whom and how? Don't we let, oh no, people will understand for sure. I don't need to say that. Stop assuming, make it very obvious, make it very clear what do you do for whom and uh, how you do that. Go personal, you can share some, um, you know, curiosity about you, some fun facts. Uh, you can also check my profile. I will share the link to it at the end of the presentation. You're gonna see that at the end of my about, I share some fun facts and it works because we are human beings, right? Behind every LinkedIn profile, there is a person. So don't be afraid to share some personal facts. Add a call to action. Call to action is like, um, I'm available for interesting projects. Feel free to contact me. I want to expand my network. Send me a direct message if you wanna know more about my projects. Check my portfolio to understand better how I work. So invite the reader to keep in contact with you and to take some action after reading your about that's what we call call to action and feel free to change it from time to time it's not a one-time thing do it change a little bit review keep changing but please make sure you have an about in your linkedin profile okay now i want to share three free strategies to help you to um, yeah, speed up the use of LinkedIn and start getting results. I'm saying free strategies because uh, you probably know that you can pay LinkedIn, right? There are some paid versions uh, that will give you some other benefits, but I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about free things that you can implement tonight immediately that will help you to get, you know, yeah, the thing going with LinkedIn. The first thing I suggest is that you treat your LinkedIn as your landing page. Landing page is like a sales page. It's something that people read and then at the end they decide if they wanna buy or not a product or a service. In this case, it's like if they wanna hire you or not, right? So treat LinkedIn as your land page. Um, treat it as a way, as a tool, as an opportunity to sell you as the best candidate in the market. So forget about being shy, forget about, oh, I'm bragging. No, this is your moment. So you need to sell, use this opportunity to sell yourself as the best candidate. Be intentional about the copy, the, the way you write, the copywriting, right? The words you use, how you position them, the data you're providing. So it's not just random text that you are writing. No, no, be intentional about, about every word that you're mentioning on your LinkedIn profile. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, be clear about what you do. Don't expect people to understand or to assume or to suppose. No, no, no. Make it easy. People are very lazy nowadays. We don't like reading. We are, you know, doing two, three things at the same time. You're on our phone, check LinkedIn profile, and then you do something. Else. Make it very obvious. Make it very explicit to people what you do, for whom and how. So avoid misunderstanding about your profile. Make sure people can contact you easily. So there are some areas that you can, uh, there is one area that you can add your email. Make sure you do it. Um, you want people to have access to you. So they can send you a private message, they can send you an email. You can mention also in the about if you have, I don't know, um, Instagram account, whatever, if you wanna drive people there, just make sure it's easy for people to reach out to you if they like your profile and they wanna talk to you. And the more you show results or achievements, the better. Forget about the just descriptive profile and demonstrate that you generate good numbers, money and results to your um, employees. That's gonna make you look good as a candidate. So treat your LinkedIn profile 
as your landing page. The second tip I have for you, if you decide to use LinkedIn, is that you engage with other people's content. You interact with other content on LinkedIn. So notice that we are moving from having an all-star profile, right? That was the first topic I, I, I touched. You, you must have an all-star profile, take care of that. Once you have it, we are moving to interacting, you know, with other people. So it's not about you anymore. It's about the way you interact with other people on LinkedIn. Why should you do that? Why should you use the platform in a way of interacting with people? Because when you engage with someone else's content, it's just easier than creating your own content, right? You don't need to come up with the idea. The content is there, you choose it, and then you write something about it. So it's easier, believe me, it's easier than creating the content from scratch. Also, you become visible to people that are outside of your network. So if I comment in your post, okay, um, everybody in your network will be notified, Juliana comment this post. So I don't know who you are connected with, but if I engage with your content, with your post, with your video, with your article, whatever thing you have on LinkedIn, everybody in your network, all your connections on LinkedIn will be notified. Juliana clicked like, Juliana uh, wrote a comment. So you get visibility to people that you not even know who they are, right? Everybody who is in your, uh, the person's uh, network, the persons that you interact with. Then you can also um, speak to people that are potentially interested in you. So if you comment on the right content, if you're looking for a UX design job, for example, and then you comment on a UX design post, or probably people who are commenting on that post, they are also interested in the UX design area, or they work in this area, they recruit for this area, or they work for companies who you know provide this kind of service. So you're niching down the audience that will see your comments. So it's a great thing to do, right? Visibility and speak to people that are interested in the same topic. You can also establish strong connections with professionals in your area. Look, stop seeing other people who work in your area as competitors. They can help you. They can refer your name. They can tell you, look, we have a position in our company. We, look, we are looking for someone just like you. So start seeing people in your area as people that you want to connect with. You can learn from them. You can exchange experience. So go ahead and establish strong connections with people um, who do the same job that you do. And also um, future managers that will hire you, potentially hire you to work in their teams. And the algorithm of LinkedIn, the robot, right, the machine that is behind LinkedIn also likes people that are active on the platform. So if you just have an all-star profile, as you spoke before, but then you're doing nothing else, the, the algorithm won't like you. Algorithm likes people that are active on the platform. And then you say, okay, mm -hmm, I understand why I should engage with other people's content. I, I got that part. I just don't know yet how to do it. So let me help you with the how. How to engage with other people's content on LinkedIn. Okay, the first thing is choosing the content that you're going to work with, right? I know it's a bit obvious, but it's like to engage with a the content. Then you first need to decide which, which content you're going to engage with. It cannot be, it should not be any content. Oh, the first post that appears on my, on my feed, I'm going to engage. No, 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 no. Take it easy and be intentional. Be careful about the kind of uh, post, the kind of content, the kind of video, article, whatever format you want to um, engage with. So think about topics that are related to the job you want to have in the future. And it applies also for career change. So if you're studying something now, which is different than you have done before in your career, right? So you are starting a new stage in your career. Talk about the future jobs you want to have. Talk about the topics you want to work with. Forget about the past if you're changing careers. So talk about the kind of jobs you want to be hired for. This is the kind of content you should be connecting and interacting on LinkedIn. So choose what makes sense for you for your next career step. So not any kind of content. Content that are related with the topics, the kind of job, the kind of companies you want to work in the future. So choosing the content is extremely important. Remember to be polite and to add value. So if it's just to criticize, if you disagree with the post or you disagree in a very you know, 
polite and careful way or just forget that post and go for someone that, for another post that you uh, can share a more friendly comment and add value. So also uh, take care of the tone that you write the, the comment on LinkedIn. Show your expertise. This is a great opportunity for you to showcase all that you know or that you're studying, the book that you're reading, the thing you that happened in your company nowadays. So don't be shy. Uh, if you are going to comment, don't be shy. Show your best version. That it's not about bragging. It's using the right moment and the right opportunity to show the right information. Okay, so don't be shy here, please. Uh, the more you can bring real situations, the better. Uh, a book that you're reading, something that you saw in a project you're making, um, something you you learned today in your class, anything is valid. Just bring real examples. People love that. That generates a lot of uh, engagement and interest from other people. And be active in the groups. There are groups also on LinkedIn that you can search for topics. You can be a member of those groups and you can be active. You can participate in those groups. So these are all ways of how you can engage with other people's content on LinkedIn. I hope you can take some good ideas here to start doing that So, And then the third strategy to get set up and start using LinkedIn the right way is creating content. So we went from engaging with other people's content to creating your own content. Ooh, that's more, <laughs> that's more difficult, Juliana. Uh, yes, I know. But it's also an important step in the process of using LinkedIn. That's why I wanted to bring it here. Creating content. Why is it so important that you create your own content, even if you're a job seeker? Okay, create content is not for people that have a company or are selling something or you're selling yourself as a candidate, as the best candidate for the company who is going to hire you. So creating content is also for you. And let me tell you why. People need to know you before they trust you as a candidate, as a professional, as a competent person, and eventually they will decide to hire you. So if you are like a ghost, if you're invisible, if no one knows you, especially if you're changing areas, they won't hire you. So it's no trust and hire. And a way to know you is uh, consuming your content. So no trust and hire. Remember that. When you are um, creating content, when you're sharing your own content, when you're speaking your voice on LinkedIn, you're uh, showing yourself as an expert in the era. And people will remember you. Oh, there's this, that guy that made that comment. That was great. Oh, I know someone who knows about that. They read, uh, read a great article, for example. So you turn into the go-to person when people think about who can help me with that? Who can I hire to solve this problem? Who can be the next person in my team? So people start having you as a reference, but they need to know you before. And they will know you if you start creating content. Remember what I said at the beginning, decision makers are on LinkedIn. So your future manager can be checking your profile right now. And that's crazy, right? But that's true. So people who will decide, I want to hire this guy, they are on LinkedIn and they can see your profile. So what you're putting out there, what you're creating, will make an impact on them. Of course, when you create content, you maximize your visibility. That's obvious, right? People connect, people engage, give more visibility, the algorithm likes that you're active in the platform. And also, um, you can request connection. Uh, you can connect with people who uh, read your post. So you post something, 10 people, let's say, click like or comment, then you can connect with those people. So you start increasing your network um, step by step. And if they are from the future company you want to work for, if they are a hiding manager, they can eventually be, you know, part of your team. You can be part of their team and work for their company. So this is why you should create content as a job seeker, okay? And when you create content, understand also what is in it for you, like which are the advantages that you get by creating content. And I know it's not easy. This is a hard topic, but it's important that you do that. So when you create content, it's one more touch point to generate credibility to you. So people will find one more source of information about you. And remember, recruiters search online on social media and on LinkedIn about you know, the candidates. So they will find some good stuff about you because you're creating good content um, and they eventually will find this content. So people can also share your article, your video, your post. And when they share that, you get visibility 
to their network. So your visibility increase exponential. You cannot control that. It's, it's crazy, but it's good. So just use it on the right way by producing good content and connecting with um, you know, more and more people. You can also share um, what you produce on LinkedIn, your LinkedIn content in your other social media. So if you use Instagram more often, for example, you can refer on an Instagram post or a story, refer to your LinkedIn post. So you kind of play a bit and you attract visibility from another social media that you are stronger, that you use more often, you feel more comfortable. You bring those people to your LinkedIn profile also. That's a very smart way to do that. Um, remember that the more active you are on LinkedIn, the higher the chances that people um, will know you, right? It has to do with the algorithm, with the visibility and all of that. So I'm just remember, reminding you that creating content is a way to be active on the platform with all the benefits that come out of that. And again, if the company never heard about you, how will they hire you, right? Companies will not hire goals. They will hire people they know, they trust. And I want to mention also, just drink a bit of water here. Five hacks, five tips um, that will increase your profile's credibility. We spoke about having a um, complete profile, like right, an all-star profile, engage with other people's content, create your own content. So people will start coming and checking your profile, recruiters, hiring manager, and all of that. So we want you to get credibility. We want people to look at your profile and say, okay. This is a good professional. I like this person. I want to talk to you. Uh, I want to talk to this person. So credibility is also something you should go for when you are considering using LinkedIn to land your dream job. So you will stand out as, okay, this is the person we want to hire. Nobody else. So how would you do that? I'll give you five hacks, five tips to get more um, credibility associated to your LinkedIn profile. And the first tip I want to share with you is I want to suggest, actually, that you have recommendations in your profile, okay? Recommendation is a part, um, it's not mandatory. So if you think about the all-star profile, you don't need to have recommendation to have an all-star profile. So it's completely optional. Actually, it appears the recommendations will appear very low in your profile, like down, you need to scroll down a little bit. So yeah, some people not even know that they can have recommendations on their profile on LinkedIn. I don't know if you knew that, but if you didn't know, <laughs> Believe me, you can and you should. Why is that? Because we all read recommendations, right? Before we buy something. You go online, you want to buy, um, I don't know, um, an ebook, for example. You're going to review some um, options and you're going to read the comments. So you're going to book a restaurant for tonight. You're going to check on TripAdvisor in the comments. So we all read comments about things before we buy them. And I'm treating you as, as a product, like you're selling yourself as a candidate, right? So people will read the recommendations about you before they decide if they want to interview you, if they want to schedule you for uh, the next step in the recruitment process or not. And also, you need to be proactive in this process and ask for recommendations. Sometimes people are, you know, your previous manager is very happy with your work, your current manager or someone that worked with you. They could say a lot of nice things, but you probably need to ask them to write a recommendation for you. So don't be shy. This is you working on your LinkedIn profile. So probably it will need to come from you to say, hey, I'm, you know, upgrading my LinkedIn profile. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, working on my career. I'm learning new things. Do you mind writing me a recommendation on LinkedIn? So probably you need to ask for that. Another way to do it is that you write a recommendation for the person on LinkedIn and then you ask for the person to write you one recommendation back. So you give first and then you ask. But probably at some point you're going to need to ask people to write you that. So just get ready for that. And you can help them to ask it. So you can um, sometimes even suggest a few phrases or you can mention, look, I would love that you mention that specific project that we work together or when I receive that feedback from, um, from that client. So the more specific the recommendation, the better. Because they can say, oh, Julian is a great professional. I recommend her for any company. It's okay, that's better than nothing, right? But if they say, Julian is a great professional because she really helps her client to land their dream job. She's flexible. She understands my situation. She shares uh, useful and practical tools. That's more powerful, right? So help people 
to write a powerful recommendation about you. Maybe they'll say, I want to write, but I don't know what to write. So you help them in the process. And as I said, be polite and recommend them back if it's the case. So they wrote your recommendation if you can. If it makes sense, just also write a recommendation back to them. So this is the first hack for you to generate more credibility to your profile. Have recommendations on your LinkedIn profile. The second hack I want to share with you today is um, to let you know that you can add external links on LinkedIn. This is something that a lot of people don't know. <laughs> they don't know they can add a link, for example, to their website, to their portfolio, to their, um, I don't know, um, a client's or a website that they develop or something like that. Yes, you can. You can totally add external links that will... Um, could be a website, portfolio, blog post, podcast interview, presentation, one event, any kind of content that you consider relevant to help you to stand out as a great candidate for the company. There is one specific area on LinkedIn to do that. You might not have it in your profile, so just write down the name and you're going to add that if you don't have it yet. It's called Featured. Featured. This is the area. So if you don't have an external link, you won't have the feature area in your profile. So just go click in the bottom of uh, add a session and then you add the feature. It's very intuitive. So it's going to say, do you want to add an external link or um, uh, an external link, an, an article or a post on LinkedIn? You want to add a website? So there are the options there. It's very intuitive. You just need to get to the, the feature part. And if you don't have that, just click in add session and add the feature so you see the options to add external links there another place you can do that is in the experience part so when you are sharing the details about the jobs you had before you have like a white space you have to put the, the, the company's name your job title the dates right and then you have a, a white space a blank space that you can write whatever you want you can also add there uh the links to external um websites, pages, whatever. It's also very nice. It visually looks very good because it breaks just the text. So it makes a very interesting impact also when you add that on experience. And again, please don't be shy because this is what makes LinkedIn work. If you don't share things, if you don't tell about your victories, uh, you know, the things you're doing, uh, the things you're good at, good at, people won't know it. So please don't be shy. Go ahead and add all the relevant external links that you can because this is going to make your profile look amazing. And that's what we want here, right? <laughs> Another hack, the third hack I want to share with you is to personalize your URL. The URL is the link that people, when people click on the link, they are automatically directed to your LinkedIn profile, right? It appears when you are in your profile, it will appear on the upper part um yeah it's the, the link to your profile so why should you personalize that because it makes it easier for people to find you to remember you right um some url some links look way better than others i'm going to share some examples and also think about the ceo okay to, to make it more searchable to help your profile to appear on google search the more you use the right words or you put your name clear out there the more your profile will appear also for the CEO search. So let me share some bad examples for you to understand what a bad URL <laughs> looks like and then some good examples. So this first one, um, Andrea Zors, those numbers here, they come by default on LinkedIn. So the, the platform generates those numbers automatically. So if you don't change, that's how it's going to appear. That's why I'm saying that it's so important because you might not even know which is your URL at the moment, right? It's like, I never thought about it. I know, I know this is kind of trick, but that's why I'm bringing this as the third hack for you. Check your URL. If you have never changed that, it will probably have some weird numbers like those two bad examples that I share with you. But you can fix that. It's very easy. There will be like a, a blue pen right beside that. Um, you are in your LinkedIn profile. You have on the right side, you had change URL. So just click there. It's very easy to do that. Some good examples. You can put like your name and your uh, family name, just like this. Simon Philip. You can separate with a, with a small bar. Or this, the second example is mine. Juliana Rabi, career coach. So I also use keywords that I want to be associated with my profile. So 
come on, anything is better than what LinkedIn generates by default, which is your name and surname and the number. So just review your URL and make sure it looks great. It's helping to sell you also <laughs> as someone who took care of this detail here. Okay. Hack number four to generate credibility on your LinkedIn profile on the way you use the platform. Please make sure you answer private messages. Okay. Um, there is a private message. I don't know if you know about it, but you can chat with people one on one. Only that person will see the message. So it's it's different than what you you post on your feed. What you post publicly, everybody can see that. I'm talking about the private message, the chat, that just you and the other person. You can also create groups here, but just to explain easier, just you and the person you're chatting with uh, will know that. It's like a Facebook Messenger like a direct message on Instagram. It's the same thing, it also exists on LinkedIn. And sometimes recruiters or hiding managers or people who wanna connect with you, they will send you private message. So why do I recommend that you answer the private message? The first reason is, um, the first point is that even if you're not interested to a job, uh, a position that a recruiter is offering you, I recommend that still you answer this message because if you don't reply, if you ignore the, the recruiter ignore the hiding messenger ignore um hiding manager sorry ignore the message from the hiding manager it will cause a bad uh, bad impression about you it's like you're ignoring the person and remember linkedin is about relationship it's a network platform so even if you say no thanks i'm not interested it's not aligned with my next career step make sure you take 30 seconds and you reply to that person value the recruiter's time and keep the communication going because a no, if you're saying no to that offer at the moment because you're not interested or for any reason, it could be a yes in the future. That recruiter can be recruited for different positions and then he might, he or she might remember you and send you another job offer. Or maybe you receive a no from a recruiter, but you reply, thank you very much for um, your time, giving me the feedback. Please keep my profile into consideration for future positions. And then in the future, the recruiter can come back to you even if you're not approved for a position that recruiter can contact you for a different position, which could be your yes. So just keep the communication going with the recruiter is always recommended. Um, if you're not checking your private messages often, you might receive an interview invitation and then you don't see, you just see like one week, 10 days later, and then the process is over. It happened to me like hundreds of times, hundreds of times. I was trying to reach candidates. They were not active in the platform. They were not checking direct message. So they were not, you know, attending the interview. So I was hiring other candidates. So make sure you check that. I would say at least two, three times per week, because if you're actively using the platforms, the, the invitations will start arriving from recruiters. So you want to see them as soon as they happen, right? So you don't miss anything that is important. Back to the algorithm, the robot that is behind the platform. I mean, sorry to repeat that, but every social media works in a similar way. They have a robot, they have a system that will give more visibility to some people or to others. So if you reply to the private methods, the algorithm will like it. We'll give you more visibility when recruiters search for a profile similar to yours. So again, the algorithm uh, will help you if you're answering the private methods. And the way the, the, uh, the inbox of the private message on LinkedIn is configured, it's a bit confusing in my opinion. So it's like if you receive new messages, the old ones, they go down so you can't easily see them. So just, you know, you can filter by unread messages and all of that. Play a bit with the filters to make sure you don't get anything lost because it's easy to get lost. But you don't want to lose any message, uh, any private message because it might be something important for you out there. So you don't want to lose it, right? So my first hack is that you please answer uh, and check often your private methods on LinkedIn. And the fifth hack is that you personalize your connection request. The connection request is when you send a connection request, right? You wanna connect, you wanna be friends, let's say, with someone on LinkedIn. So you have basically two options. When you click on connect, uh, it will pop up one window will say, do you want to send a personalized message? Yes or no. You can choose no. So if you choose no, automatic message is like something like, hi, Juliana, I want to connect with you. Something like that. The automatic message that comes by default. I suggest that you do not do that. I suggest that you click in connect and then the window will pop up and will say, do you want to uh, send a personalized message? You click yes. 
it means that you will need to write something to that person, right? So it means that you're going to need to take time to uh, know who is that, what are you going to write to the person? I don't know anything about that person. Well, so you need to know something <laughs> about the person. You're going to need to uh, spend some time, a few minutes at least, taking a look at the person's profile so you know who you are talking with right you know who you are writing to so take a look at the person's profile you can check a very um very nice thing to do is that you you check activities activities is one part of the the linkedin profile that you can see everything that the person did on the platform every like she clicked everything she posted every interaction she did so be careful with what you do on the platform because people can see that that's an open part of your profile so you go to the person you want to connect with and you check his or her activities so see which kind of content the person is interacts take some information to get to know a little bit about that person and then think how you can personalize the message to that person based on the profile and the things you saw on her activity what should you avoid generic and empty and blah 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 things like hi looks like we have a lot of things in common a lot of people write that but that's not effective because it feels like you just copy and paste like a robot you know or a robot i'm sure you you have received some kind of connection request that felt like a robot i receive that every single day it feels like mm, I, why should i accept that right so we don't want that i want you to generate credibility with your profile so when you personalize the connection request message you won't look like a robot you're going to look like a real person who wrote something for me specifically and i will like that way better so i created the three magic steps <laughs> it's a fun way to say that the three easy steps for you to follow every time you're writing um personalized connection request to someone on linkedin so you probably want to write down that also and then you can just check your notes every time you send your connection request to anyone uh, you follow the three steps here the first step is very basic but extremely important you want to call the person by the name okay so i'm juliana i'm not julia i'm not julie i'm not juliana with double n so also attention to the spelling the name is something very important to the person so even if it's a weird name for you the person is used to that so make sure you say hi or hello and you write the person's name that's going to create a positive impact since the beginning in your personalized message this is the first tip the second tip the second uh, step you should follow is pay a compliment say something good about the person when you're checking a person's profile as i mentioned before when you're checking your activities see which kind of person is that maybe you can refer to an article that the person wrote a podcast interview that the person was interviewed a post that she did or uh, if she studied in a university that you admire or if she's from the same seat that you are or if she's studying something um, right now you can always refer to it in a positive tone always so check the person's profile get some information and then you pay a compliment be friendly say something good to the person and then the third step is just ask to connect with the person when you're sending a connection request is not 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 the time to say hey i'm looking for a job can you connect me with the hiring manager is there any position available in your company i would love to work for you no 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 stop that just ask to connect later on when the person accepts your connection request and all of that you can engage in your conversation and go deeper into other things but right now you just want the person to accept your connection request so name pay a compliment just ask to connect I have an example here to make this more real. For example, hi, Juliana. I found your profile very interesting and it was great to see how you moved from an engineer position to a manager in such a short time with this company. I am already following your organization and I would appreciate connecting with leaders in the industry. Have a great day. Regards. That's one example. I put the number of characters, 298, because you have up to 300 characters. So you need to be careful. It's kind of limited time, uh, uh, space. But you see, you can write a lot. So test it out, name, pay a compliment, and just ask to connect. This has been working a lot for me. So I'm sharing my magic formula with you. Make sure you start implementing that also. Okay? Ooh! There was a lot, right? There I need also more water here. I want to hear from you. I spoke 
a lot already. Before we move to the questions, I just want to share this QR code here. So if you have your phone, just, you know, position it and you're going to be linked automatically to my LinkedIn profile. I would love to connect with the 700. I don't even know how many people are connected anymore. <laughs> I would love to receive a lot of LinkedIn connection requests. If you personalize the message, even better, right? As I just told you how to do it. But don't be shy. Let's connect on LinkedIn. Let's keep the conversation going. This is a very limited time that we have. So I would love to keep talking through LinkedIn. So just scan this code. Please send me a connection request on LinkedIn. Also mention I was in the seminar about LinkedIn as a tool to land your dream job. Uh, so it's easier for me to you know, who, know who you are. So make sure we connect on LinkedIn. It will be my pleasure to keep this conversation going there on LinkedIn. Okay. And now, yes, question and answer time. I think I'm going to stop sharing this. So let me see how to do it. So I can see, I can see the chat. I, Valentina, where do I stop sharing? I, hey, yeah. I don't know how to you. stop sharing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm on the big screen. Yes, yes, yes. So, do we have some questions? Oh, I see. We have 17 questions here. Whoa. We have. Uh, how do we do that? Juliana. Yeah. How do you want to organize that? Uh, well, I mean, as you prefer. If you want, you can go through uh, the questions, or you want me to read it. I mean, how it's like more easy for you. Let me start with the ask a question. I will check people who wrote right on the chat the ask a question. So let me start with that. I think it's a nice way. And then we see if we have a few minutes for other questions. So let me see. Any tip? I'm reading here, okay, from the from the chat. Any tip on how to write the about session as a student with little work experience? Um, nice question. Because um, sometimes we feel like if I don't have a lot of experience, I have nothing to say. In the about right so remember the about is um related to your career journey so you can say about positive results positive impact you made in previous job you can say about the things you are studying at the moment the courses you are doing at the moment uh even books that you're reading so make sure you talk about positive things in your past but also show what you are doing to get experience in your area so make sure you highlight courses and uh, books related to the future area so that will add more credibility to your profile, even if you don't have a lot of work experience. Uh, Jorge asked, is the practice of putting in your headline the companies you worked before <laughs> as X Google, X, um, X IBM, all of that, a good practice? Or is this just an outburst of ego? There is a lot of discussion about it, okay? Some people are like, yeah, if you put an X Google, um, on your headline, right? On that line, right under your name. It calls attention because Google is a powerful company. But some people also can think, okay, if you're not working in Google anymore, maybe you did something bad there. That's why you're not in the company anymore. So this is kind of a trend at the moment. Some people use it. Um, I think you are more than the companies you work for. That's my personal approach. So I stand more for mentioning skills and things you can do. It doesn't matter if you work for Google or for Juanita or for any company, but it's it's kind of fashion at the moment. A lot of people are doing that. So yeah, up to you. I, I prefer to stick to skills because that's something that is mine, not related to the company I am at the moment. Another question, what should we have in the headline if we are students in our final year? Okay, think always about the future. Okay, so if you want to land a job in that area, you're going to put that area. Forget about what you have done before if it's not related to the area you want to study. So put the job title you want to have in the future, even if you're still studying. Oh, Juliana, but I'm lying, right? Because I still don't have experience. No, you're not lying. You're showing in a clear way to the recruiters and hiring managers the kind of job they should contact you for. So for anyone, students in the final year, people with uh, uh, small experience, people changing jobs, it doesn't matter. The headline speaks about the future, about the kind of job you want to be contacted for. So make it very obvious for the recruiter. Another question, how do you grow your network through LinkedIn? So far, I've only connected with people I know in real life, bam wrong and i'm unsure how to reach out to new people look if you 
<laughs> That's a great question. Eh? If you only connect with people you know in real life, your network will be very limited, especially now that we're talking about, you know, working remotely so a company from a completely different country can hire you, uh, collaborate with projects in other countries. So forget about only people you know in real life. This is not Facebook. On Facebook, it might make sense. Oh, it's weird to connect with someone I don't know. On LinkedIn, no. It's a social network platform. People do connect with people they don't know. How will they hire you? Remember, no trust and hire if they don't know you. They won't trust you. They won't hire you. So forget about only people that you know in real life. Uh, choose people that are doing the same job you want to do in the future. So people who are in the same level that you want to work for, want to work um if you want to be a UX designer, make sure you connect with UX designers. Make sure you connect with hiring managers that will be your future managers. Keep people in your industry so just interact with their content. Start with the engaging with content. Connect with their content. Get visibility through adding value, relevant content. So they will see Juliana comment my post. Juliana comment and they will read what you comment and will say, oh, nice. She knows what she's talking about. Interesting this perspective. So they are way more open to connect with you and personalize the connection request with my three magic steps to increase the chance that people accept your connection request. But forget about, I only connect with people I know in real life. That's completely wrong for LinkedIn, okay? Another comment, another question here. I got luck in the results from our student research project got published in a professional journal. Very good. And I wonder how to best communicate it on LinkedIn not only in a post, but also list on my profile or so. Yes, uh, you can post about the, the project that was posted in this um, professional journal. Feature, add the, the, the part feature and add a link to it. You can write an article about it also. And in your current, um, where you are studying in your school, make sure also in the student, in the education part, make sure you also mention there. So there are at least four places you can mention about it. There is a second part of the question. Also, there is there is a possibility to use a cover picture on LinkedIn. And I always wonder what is considered appropriate to put on there. The cover picture, I'm assuming you're talking about the background photo, the one I mentioned, the, the rectangular one, the, the body gray, right? That comes by default, the one that appears behind your um, profile photo so i already spoke about it but yes you should have a background photo and try to associate that as much as possible with what you do or you want to do in the future if you're changing careers if you're studying for a new um, job a new profession so visually you also send a clear image of what you do so you have your job title explaining that but you also have the visual impact of the background photo okay Another question, how often should you add content? Um, good question. Uh, I would say first, make sure you have an all-star profile and you're sharing the right image in your profile. Because once you start adding content, uh, interact with people and all of that, you attract visibility to your profile. So make sure you organize the house <laughs> first. And then, um, I don't know if this question, add content is about posting content or adding content on LinkedIn, so on, on your profile. So in your profile, every time you have something new to add, a new course that you did, a new skill that you, you gain, a new um, link you want to add to your profile, a new job, every time you have something new, you just add to your profile. So as, as soon as you need it, as soon as there is something relevant to mention. If you're talking about posting content, I would say if you're starting, you can do it um, posting or engaging with content. Try to do it at least two or three times per week to keep active on the platform. That's already better than nothing. Okay, so start with um, engaging with content two or three times per week. Another question. Hello, I'm a new student here in Germany for master's studying research in computer and systems engineering. I have experience as a web developer. Okay, mentioned a lot of language here. I would like to land a part-time job like work student. If it's possible to explain how to make the best use of LinkedIn for this purpose. You can use LinkedIn for any purpose. Land a part-time job, land a full-time job, change areas, get promoted, be seen as an expert in your area. So everything that I shared in the full presentation is also applicable to you, okay? Let me say one thing. LinkedIn is not only for people looking for a full-time job in a certain 
companies that are well known. It's for any purpose. Remember what I said at the very beginning, get clarity about your why. Why are you using LinkedIn? What do you want to achieve with the platform? So whatever you want to do, go for it. So land a part-time job as a student. That's amazing. That's completely possible on LinkedIn. So just go for it. Apply everything that I shared on the presentation. But it also applies for students looking for part-time job. I mean, of course, totally. There is no problem with that. Another question. What is your advice to someone with a humanity background, English, liberal arts, etc., in a prior career who is now learning to code and wants to signal that they are looking for opportunities in a new field? I already answered that, but thanks for asking again. Mention in your headline the future area, coding, um, the language you, you're learning now. So talk about the future. Forget about the humanity background if you don't want to work with that anymore. Make sure you highlight that skills, uh, the skills you have, the new ones, the ones you're learning in your about, in your studies, in your experience, if you're already working in the area. So talk about the future, the kind of jobs related to uh, code and forget about the, the humanity. Not forget, you're going to mention in the previous job, you're going to mention in your study, but you're going to put more emphasis and use more space on your LinkedIn profile to talk about the coding and the future job you want to have. Okay. Another question, <clears throat> is LinkedIn also effective for social professions, for example, clinical psychologist? How should I adjust my profile? The same way I explained. I haven't come across any area that I, I noticed or I got evidence that LinkedIn doesn't work. So any area, you will find people working in the same area on LinkedIn. You will find groups on LinkedIn for people interested in that topic. You can find clients or people who want to hire you. So any area, even clinical psychologists, like any area, pretty much. There is no, oh, it works better for those areas, but for those areas, not really, no, any, any area. Can we have this great talk later? Thanks for the great talk. I'll take it as a compliment. And as Valentina said, it is recorded, the presentation. You're all going to receive it tomorrow via email together with a gift that I did for you. It's a checklist about LinkedIn, so you can review your profile in details every single area that are pointed out to you and you're going to review to help you to improve your profile so tomorrow you're going to receive an email from iron rack with the recording of this um event and uh linkedin uh surprise from my side also um another question when trying to land our first role an entry role it's difficult to showcase experience and pop up among, among experienced candidates. Is the premium option a viable uh, one? In this case, to be more visible. Premium option, for the ones who doesn't know, is the paid option. Okay, so everything that I shared today in my presentation are free things that you can implement in one hour from now. Everything that I shared is in the free version, so you don't need to put any money out of that. But LinkedIn is a business, right? So they have paid options, premium options, different ones that you can pay, but it won't help you to appear more in the search. It won't put you in the first page of Google, let's say, of the LinkedIn search. No, it will give you more uh, visibility of the background of the offer. So if you apply for a job and you have a preview, a premium version, you see how many people applied for the job, which is their, uh, how many years of experience they have in that job, how many languages they speak, how many, um, you know, systems they use that are related to the job. You get like the, the view of the backstage of the job, but a premium version will not make you more visible to the recruiter. So uh, you need to be active, you need to have a good profile, you need to keep improving, learning, engaging with the right people. There, there is no magic here, but don't pay premium thinking that it will give you more visibility because you're a student and you don't have enough experience. No, unfortunately not. Um, the presentation is recorded. Yes, it is. Any tips for a student's profile? I mentioned that already. Mention the courses you're doing, the skills you're learning, the projects you're doing. I know that Iron Hack has a lot of projects, practical activities you do during the course. So please make sure you put that up in your about because that's practical experience. So maximize what you have, practical experience, volunteering, group activities, um, uh, the theory that you are learning. So go for that. Don't, don't lie on your about. Don't say you have more experience than you have, but highlight as much as possible the experience you do have. Um, when career transitioning, how do you address the lack of experience in your new field? I think I 
cover that already in you know, other answers. If you are a student, how will you focus the headline if you're interested in find internship programs? Um, say, talk about the areas. Yeah, talk about the areas you want to work for. And then um, in your about, I think it's better in the about, you can say interested in internship programs. And when you start connecting with people and you're not when you send a connection request, when the person accepts the connection request and you're having a conversation, a chat conversation, you can say, look, I'm, I'm interested in internship positions. OK, uh, if you are an intern at the moment, you can put on the, on the headline intern. Um, UX design intern, for example. So you don't need to say, I'm searching for internship position. You're saying that you're an intern. In your about, you say, available or interested in internship uh, positions related to this and this area. And you can mention that one-on-one -on -one when you're uh, chatting with someone, OK? Um, also about the premium account, I already mentioned about it. I'm selecting here, okay, because there are some questions that are repeated. Sorry. Um, some are quite generic, so let me just check others. Where would they place the recommendations? Uh, I don't know who is they. Where would they place the recommendations? I don't know who is they, but LinkedIn, <laughs> we're talking about LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn will place the recommendation part uh, at the very bottom of the profile, so you really need to scroll down. To, to get it. Um, as soon as you receive a recommendation or as soon as you write a recommendation, this area appears in your profile. So if you don't have any record, if you never wrote a recommendation on LinkedIn and never received one, you won't have in your profile. So you need to write the first one or to receive the first one. So it will automatically appear, but it's down in your profile. You need to scroll down a lot to see that. Um, any tips for profiles that are transitioning from one role to a different one, I already mentioned that. Talk about the future role, right, in your, in your headline. Um, do you think, oh, I like this one. Do you think it's a good process to reach uh, managers directly on LinkedIn for an application? In order to reach, to reach the dark job market, uh, it's the hidden job market, but yes, I got you. And how? Because generally I heard that people think it's bad to ask directly for a job. Look, um, be very careful when you reach out to people directly because you get more visibility. So you reach in the wrong way, you're closing doors. If you reach people directly, especially key people in the company, people who you make a decision about hiding you or not, if you do it on the right way, you're opening doors. So if you're gonna reach the hiring manager, say, hey, I'm looking for a job, can you hire me? Please don't do that. Don't do that. That's not what you wanna do. No, no. You can reach the hiring manager to start a conversation to create a relationship, to show your potential, to exchange ideas, to talk about the area, not to ask for a job. So if you're going to reach a high demand to ask for a job, don't. Don't do that. You're closing doors completely. Um, where should I start looking for a remote job in UK? On LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn has a place to search for jobs. So you just put UX... Uh, which was, oh no, he, he didn't say the job title. So let's say UX design. And then instead of in the location, instead of putting, you can put UK or you can put remote. So if you're looking for a remote job, try remote. So you can search for jobs on LinkedIn. And if they are remote jobs, still, you just put instead of a specific location, just put remote. And then once you find the jobs, you see the ones that are in the UK. Um, how to announce, this is going to be the last one, okay? How to announce to LinkedIn when one is ready to start working? Let me see if I understood that. How to announce to LinkedIn when one is ready to start working? Um, there is that option that you can um, put the, the green frame around your profile photo, say open to work. That's a way to do that, to, to show that you are available to work. I personally don't like that because in my opinion, it shows desperation. So I will not hire you as a candidate just because you're available. I'm going to hire you because you're good, because you're qualified, because I see that you can add value to my company. So two completely different things. But this is one way you can add the open to work framework, the, the green thing around your profile photo. Um, you can mention in your about, I'm available to uh, join new projects, new companies. 
and you can tell that to people when you are engaging into one-on-one -on -one conversation. So please don't post on your feed, hi, I'm available to work, this is my curriculum if you know something. This will only show desperation. So there are ways, better ways to do that. And I think we're going to finish now. So apologies if I couldn't answer all the questions. Uh, I couldn't check the chat, so I was checking only the ask a question. We had third question, 30, 30, 30, 30 zero questions. So yeah, that's it. So Valentina, back to you. <laughs> are you there? Hi. Yeah, sure. You are well, there. I think it's kind of crazy. <laughs> we have ton and ton and ton of questions at the end. Uh, we were 733. Yeah. I mean, this is so crazy, guys. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Juliana, to you for, you know, like hosting and leading this amazing workshop for all the, you know, like all, uh, well, the templates that you share with us this session, like everything, your amazing energy always. And yeah, I mean, I think that's it. And as I said, guys, uh, tomorrow you guys will receive the, uh, well, the recording plus uh, Juliana's template. And uh, thank you so much. I really hope you had an amazing day, afternoon, nine, uh, you know, like I know you guys are all over the world. So <laughs> just have a very nice day. <laughs> thank yes. you guys. And thank you, Juliana. Bye. See you in the next session. You're welcome. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's keep talking there, okay? Take I'm care. sure you will receive many connections, Juliana. <laughs> Maybe 733. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I, I don't think so, eh? <laughs> Bye, Let's guys. See. Let's see. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Take care.